Today, we are going over how to use Hathor with fish networking. If you've never heard of Hathor before, simply put, it's a feature-rich multiplayer game hosting service. Hathor provides automatic scalability and can be deployed to over 11 global regions. But what's unique about Hathor is you only pay for what you use. This means if you're using a bandwidth optimized networking solution like Fishnet, you're going to save quite a lot. You also only pay per game session. This means you'll also be saving money during slower hours when not as many players are online. Without waiting any longer though, let's continue with the guide. If you want to learn more about Hathor, check out my video description link. First thing we need to do is like with anything, make an account for Hathora. Their website is hathora.dev and on their website you'll see a login button in the top right. Once you click login, you'll be brought to a new page that has a login button. These things always throw me off for a moment. You would think it would say login and register or something of that sort, but right now it only says login and once you click it, you'll see a sign up button over here on the right. I made an account using my Gmail, as you can see, firstgeargames at gmail.com. You start off with a generous $500 and free credits. This should be more than enough to cover development of your game and likely even to its early launch stages. As you can see, I'm only missing six cents from mine and I've already used my account a dozen or so times to test fishnet features. So even if you do run out of credits, Hathor is very cost friendly to use. The first thing you're going to do is create an application. So go ahead and click that button in the top right and then go ahead and give your application a name. Right now you're gonna see no deploy Deployments, options to upload builds, and a couple of other things. However, there's a much easier way to do this. So I'm going to go over to their page, click get started, and then I'm going to go to beginner's tutorial, scroll down a little bit, and then I'm going to get their plugin for Unity. And if you got lost, don't worry about it. I'll have this link in the video description as well. I've already imported their plugin into Unity. You can tell because I have the Hathor folder as well as the Hathor menu up top. Also, when importing, you may be asked to upgrade some API or packages. Go ahead and do that as well. We're going to first test your connection with Hathor by dropping the Network Manager prefab into your scene. If you don't know where to find it, just type in Network Manager here, and then you can just drag it and drop it into the scene. Now we're going to go ahead and add Tugboat. So go ahead and click Add Component on your Network Manager, and then choose Tugboat. And don't forget, once you drop it in, to set the spawnable prefabs to the default prefab objects. Next, go up to the Hathor menu and click Create New Hathor Server Configuration. And you notice that's going to drop it directly under the assets folder. So if you accidentally click away from it, make sure you click the one you created under assets. There's two ways you can do this. You can click login to Hathor Cloud or click login with token. Both work pretty seamlessly. One will open your browser and if you've already logged in, you'll be all set. Sometimes you'll see this window here for device confirmation and sometimes they'll just log you in. When you do see this window though, go ahead and click confirm and then close out of your browser. One thing that is absolutely worth mentioning is you need to have your Linux modules installed. So if you don't have Linux dedicated server as well, mono Linux, go ahead and add those now. You can do so by opening your Unity Hub, going to installs, clicking your editor version, and then add modules. And if I scroll down a bit, these are the two you need, the Linux dedicated server build support and Linux build support for mono. And optionally, you can install the Linux build support for IL2 CPP. And I know it might seem annoying to have to install different modules and wait for them to install, but pretty much any hosting solution you use, you're going to need those modules anyway. Back to Hathora, you'll see that there is a target application for the one we made. If you don't see that, go ahead and refresh your list, leave the app ID as is, leave all of these settings as is, and then click generate server build. We essentially just made a server build of our game, but it's not uploaded yet. By the way, after you're done building, go to File, Build Setting, and make sure you're still on the platform you intended, in my case, Windows, Mac, Linux. When building, Hathor switches over to the dedicated server platform to build your server, of course, and then switches back. But sometimes Unity doesn't like to cooperate and will leave you on the dedicated server platform. So if so, go ahead and switch back to your original one. Next, let's go down to the deployment configuration. We're going to leave pretty much everything the same. Now, one thing to note is the container port number. This is 7777. However, if I go over to the network manager, you can see that I have it at 7770, and that's the port we need to use. So I'm gonna go back to this and change it to 7770. Once done, Let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit and click deploy application. So what's going on now is it's zipping up all of your server files and it's distributing it to their cloud servers. Once this is done, your game will be accessible to all of their regions at once. Mine finished deploying and as I said, this actually uploads it to all regions at once. So you can go to your region here and choose whichever one you like. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on Seattle though and then click create room. Think of a room as a unique instance of your game. So you can have many instances of your game in any region or any number of regions. 
All right, so the room is created and there's logs down here as well. Just in case you get stuck, you might want to check those out. Now, rooms only stay active for five minutes if there's nobody in them. Just keep that in mind because servers will automatically spin down when not being used. This is great because it saves you money. So let's go ahead and copy the connection info by clicking the button here. Go into our network manager, going over to client address, paste what we got, but highlight the port, cut it, and make sure you get rid of the colon right there. And then drop the port in the port field and go ahead and hit play. And once you're in play mode, go ahead and click client and you'll connect to the Hathor server. You can validate this by of course seeing the connected indicator as well checking the console and you can see the server as well the port that you're connected to. Also, something else worth looking at, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my Hathora config, scroll on down, and right below create room, I'm going to click Hathora console. It should bring you right to this screen, but just in case it didn't, what I'm going to do is go to the beginning of my account, click the app name Fishnet Test, look for the active session right down here, and then click details. And you can of course use these live views to get an idea of how well your game is performing or what's going on in that specific room. And one final thing before we wrap up this video, remember when I said you can treat each room like it is an instance of your game? Well, that also means that you can use it to search for rooms as well. So here's a game called Coin Grab that's being worked on. It's a demo for Hathora and it has a sample lobby set up. So when I hit play, you can go ahead and see all of these rooms that are already made. And yes, these are actual rooms. If I go ahead and click create game, you can see another one is added. And this again is just an example. Don't mind a debug print, but this is totally something you could do with Hathora and your game.